वेलकम लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन टू द फर्स्ट ऑफ थ्री वीडियोस अ सीरीज दैट आई एम डेवलपिंग एज आई प्रॉमिस्ड इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियोस अबाउट द ओबीयू रिसर्च एंड एनालिसिस प्रोजेक्ट टॉपिक्स सो आई एम ब्रेकिंग द एंटायर सीरीज इनटू थ्री बिकॉज़ वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट फाइव टॉपिक्स ईच इन डिफरेंट सेगमेंट्स द फर्स्ट फाइव विल बी एनालाइज्ड इन डिटेल थ्रू दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो एंड आई एम होपिंग दैट दिस विल हेल्प यू स्पेशली इन द स्टेज ऑफ टॉपिक सिलेक्शन एंड कंपनी आइडेंटिफिकेशन मोर इन द एरिया ऑफ टॉपिक सिलेक्शन टू सी यू नो इफ इफ अ टॉपिक इज द राइट चॉइस फॉर यू और नॉट मोस्टली ऑन दैट नोट जनरल एंड ब्रीफ रिमाइंडर इफ एनी वन इज इंटरेस्टेड इन वर्किंग विद मी एज योर मेंटो फॉर द ओ बी यू रैप प्रोजेक्ट Uh, you can definitely reach out click the link in the description section and uh, fill out the registration form uh, to which you will receive the instructions email uh, which is quite detailed and which will help you get started after which you can decide how to proceed on that note let's get started okay now as far as the uh, discussion is concerned i'm hoping to look at when we analyze the topics i'm hoping to answer three main questions the first is how do we really understand the topic and this is a very problematic area because many students many candidates if you look at candidates uh, from my experience who have uh, come to me uh, in terms of support or requesting support in terms of resubmission one of the most fundamental reasons as to why candidates fail the obu rap is because they do not really understand in full essence what the topic really presents as an opportunity for you to evaluate and that is something that we really need to clarify we need really need to address and it is one reason why if you go to the obu rap uh, youtube page or youtube channel uh, by the oxford brooks university you will realize that with this current iteration they have released new videos on each topic so i'm hoping that this this series that i'm creating will be a supplement for you uh, on top of that so i definitely would recommend you to check out those videos those are very helpful and created by faculty uh, which is also uh, quite uh, which makes it quite uh, useful and quite you know insightful uh, in terms of what you can learn all right the second question i want to answer is what are the key terms embedded within a topic that drive the topic that drive your effort in in you know escalating your project because when you really think about each topic uh, what we really are able to understand is that there are key terms embedded within every topic that help you uh, by and large understand the topic and also put your effort focus your effort and that is very important because you have to know how and where your effort must be directed toward and the third question i'm hoping to answer is how to approach your research effort in terms of the topic there are a uh, guidance notes with each topic given in the information pack itself so i'm hoping to look at those uh, and and just uh, basically talk about the overall topic as much as i can now uh, obviously what i want to do here is uh, a more of a raw effort uh, to keep the conversation to keep the discussion quite authentic and keep it quite simple uh, and practical and just see how it goes um as we go along all right on that note uh, let's start taking a look at the topic as i said uh, we will be looking at the first uh five topics at this stage uh the first topic as you can see is analyze and evaluate the impact on the business and financial performance of an organization of an aspect of an organization's performance management system areas that could be considered include budgetary control systems costing techniques and environmental performance management those are given as examples they say that access to internally generated information is essential and primary data collection may enable you to evaluate the impact okay now what we have to understand here is uh, the overall topic is about a performance management system meaning uh the first thing that should come to your mind is uh things like f5 f9 things that you learned in f5 and f9 should um uh, easily be applied here uh because when you really think about it the ultimate goal in this topic is to like most topics in the set of 15 topics is to look at the impact 
on the business and financial performance of an organization. So one thing is clear, whatever you do, whatever you use, whatever area or scope you choose to analyze, you will have to without a doubt have an extremely high level of analysis, a deep level of analysis in terms of the business and financial performance of the company that you've chosen. Right. And when you really think about business and financial performance, you get the sense that it is general. There's business performance. What is performance of the business? It's how by and large, by as a business itself, how the company is performing, how are they doing? And the second aspect is financial performance. So when you really think about it, whichever industry a company belongs to, whichever uh, scope, whichever you know kind of customer base, whether it's retailing, wholesaling, doesn't matter whether they are manufacturing, whether they are just distribution and sales, doesn't matter. Financial performance is also a holistic picture. And most of the accountancy ratios and models that you use to evaluate the financial performance of a company are quite generic, quite standard. But what is the differentiator? What exactly is the differentiator in topic one is that you are focusing on an organization's performance management system. An organization's performance management system. Now, what does this mean? PMS, right? Performance Management System. And uh, usually you start learning uh, management accounting with F2 and you bring, you advance that information by F5 and then you add it to uh, add to that financial management aspects in F9. And if you're someone who already has proceeded to uh, the professional level, then SBL, uh, Strategic Business leadership Leader, and uh, P4 and P5, AFM and A uh, APM, are subjects that complement this knowledge. Overall, all these subjects have a heavy focus on performance management systems because ultimately, think about it. If you take a company, whatever you do to drive, whatever you do to make sure that the wheel is turning right, that the machine is oiled and running well, that is what you call management, right? Management. And what exactly are you trying to achieve there by management? If your management is better, if your management is good, then you are trying to maximize the performance of the company. Now, of course, the perception about performance, what kind of, how do you perceive performance? Because, you know, for example, if I tell you, you know that back in the day, shareholders were having the perception of shareholder profits, right? Shareholder, we used to call it shareholder wealth maximization. But now the term has transitioned. Nowadays, uh, most of the uh, companies and most of the uh, modern Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 companies do not use the term shareholder wealth. They use shareholder value maximization. So there, what has happened is the perception of performance, how shareholders, managers, directors, the stakeholders in general, see performance has moved from wealth to value. Shareholder wealth to shareholder value. So this is a very important aspect because when you really look at modern companies, you have to have a realistic, practical and actual perception of what that company deems as good performance. What are the specific KPIs, key performance indicator areas overall by and large that they consider are the valuable performance drivers for the company because those are the areas that you will have to analyze in this company and to help you they've given you a few examples areas that could be considered include budgetary control systems costing techniques environmental performance management think about it think about the key words embedded here budgetary control costing environmental performance see all of these terms should ring a bell in your mind what are they talking about here budgetary control costing ultimately they're talking about cost management of in in a, a larger uh, setting in a larger picture financial management because you see uh, for example if i take costing you know you learn so many different types of costing absorption costing marginal costing 
um, value-based management and costing approaches they are activity-based costing you know you have all these costing approaches that you learn but ideally what are you trying to do on the one end you want to price your product right right you want to have a very strong pricing mechanism in the company and the other aspect is managing your costs because if you can really break down your costs into each component your you know direct material direct labor direct expenses the overheads uh, from activity based perspective you are looking at you know cost driver per activity so when you can manage these numbers really well when you can optimize them when you can bring them down in particular for costs you're basically expanding your margin and by expanding your margin what are you trying to do you're trying to maximize your profits by maximizing your profits you're trying to you know give out more dividends you're trying to um, reinvest more in the business you're trying to make your shareholders happy and by making your shareholders happy you're ultimately hoping to gain the confidence and the momentum that you need to run in the market as a stable reliable entity while maintaining your stock as well if you are listed so overall when you really think about it all these terms that i've highlighted are related to performance so these three are just examples and nowadays of course environmental performance is a huge area you know uh, for example if you take the british uh, petroleum incident in 2010 the deep water horizon oil spill you really know that the the company's value overnight Uh, got erased by a uh, more than half after that incident and owing to the fines owing to the reputational damage uh, the hit they took was massive and for them to recover it took more than 6 years for them to recover and come back to get back to where they were right so this is performance we are talking about the oil spill incident occurred in the first place because of there was a performance lapse they they uh, they kind of what they did was basically they skipped a critical uh, quality inspection check right a quality assurance check in one of their uh, systems that were in place they should have done a system check uh, which they avoided because of costs they thought that you know fine not doing that would help them save some dollars didn't work out you see how performance can be uh, directed when when not in the right place because if they had done the system check they would have spent about maybe 1000 2000 5000 $5, $5, but would have saved the entire company's reputation and 4 5 years worth of you know hit they took but by sacrificing that by thinking that saving my $1000 or $5000 there is going to help me you know a little bit Uh, they sacrificed uh, uh, much uh, more than it was worth but beyond that the disaster that it caused the damage it caused to the latin american the gulf of mexico the whole area the environment and the ecosystem to this date we are seeing um, oil patches uh, in that particular area so it's it's devastating so companies really have to you know whenever you analyze a company ideally that is why i said earlier you have to really look at that company and think or extract the perceptions the lenses of how they look at their own performance and based on that you can determine what performance management systems are relevant for that company what are the performance management systems now of course in this effort you're going to have some general ones like you know budgetary control you take budgetary control budgetary control is an area that you find in every company every single company unless a company is very modernistic and they have you know uh, shifted to or transition to a budgeting system like beyond budgeting which now we find in the apm syllabus but if not if not most of the performance management systems that you find uh, as far as labels are concerned will be generic however when you deep dive into those systems when you really think about it the first thing you're going to hit of the first thing you're going to face is kpis key performance indicators and that is where you'll really see the business the business's performance metrics reflected within that performance management system because if you take a telecommunication for example you take the uh the overall uh customer 
uh, response management, for example, right, or customer, uh, customer handling. Let's particularly talk about that area. If you take the customer handling aspect of a telecommunication company, of a hotel industry, you know, a hotelier or a banker, you look at these three businesses, whichever business you may choose, you'll realize that customer management and customer retention, customer handling, customer acquisition, the whole shebang. When you really look at it, you realize that each industry, each company has extremely different metrics, different KPIs of how they measure and manage their customers and the customer satisfaction levels. And that is where your particular choice of the company will differentiate your project from other choices, other companies. And that is also where your analysis will have to be very thorough. And the other aspect is that all of this effort in terms of looking at the performance management system ultimately has to be boiled down to the reflection and the effect and the impact that is having on the business performance and financial performance. So there is no doubt whatsoever that as far as this company is concerned, you will have to show the examiner or the reviewer how has the performance management system that you chose, how has it impacted, how has it influenced, how has it transformed, how has it changed the business performance of the company separately, where the account, the business tools, accountancy and business tools will help you do the evaluation, and how has the performance management system affected the financial performance of the company. So that is very critical. This is how you should be understanding this. Uh, overall, when you think about the verbs themselves, you know uh, you have uh, pretty heavy duty verbs here. Analyze and evaluate. Analyze and evaluate. And you know, uh, when you look at your overall breakdown of a company or rather the project itself, you have three main sections. The third section being analysis and evaluation, which is going to be the bulk of your work. And therefore, there is absolutely no doubt that your analysis, which is the first step, has to be extremely detailed and more detailed than what you're hoping to include in the project. Because it is only when your analysis is quite wide, quite extreme, very expansive, it is only then can you actually uh, do a thorough evaluation because you can pick and choose exactly what metrics, what areas, what business performance cases, what financial performance cases. For example, let me put it into context. Uh, if you take the financial performance, uh, you, you can basically calculate 100 ratios, right? It's very easy. Are you able to bring in all the 100 into your evaluation? Not really, because you're going to have to pick and choose. You only have a limited word count. And after you bring in a ratio, you have to be economical with the number of words you use to evaluate. So, and ultimately, when the examiner or the reviewer is going through your report, when they see the metrics, they have to realize that you've made the smart choices. You made the right choices in expressing exactly what this whole thing is about. So, which means you have to make a smart decision. Uh, therefore, the only way you can do it is if you keep your analysis extremely thorough and then from that thorough analysis carefully uh, do your evaluation uh, in a very um, deep sense. Okay, uh, more on that when we actually work one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, as uh, you choose. Uh, so these are the key words and this is how you should understand this topic. Obviously this topic requires internally generated information, meaning that it will be a primary research oriented topic. Uh, whatever company you're going to choose, they, you will have to speak to a senior position member, uh, someone and get official permission uh, to and, and access to information that will help you uh, go about your research effort. Um, definitely uh, in this, uh, of course, you have to check out the OBU guidance. Uh, in case you uh, are able to get permission from a company, uh, you will have to check with them if they need to maintain anonymity. They need you to maintain anonymity in your report. And if so, uh, you will have to get them to uh, write to OBU and uh, ensure that they inform OBU about their uh, preference. Okay, so this is topic number one. Now, 
we are going to look at topic number two. In fact, uh, this is actually a very interesting topic. Uh, it's uh, something that I have enjoyed uh, in many cases with uh, several mentees. I have enjoyed thoroughly reading about the work was incredible. Analyze and evaluate the impact positive or negative of an internal digital or technological innovation on operational and financial performance of the organization. Areas that could be considered are new business processes, new software or hardware, supplier and customer processes. Okay, now again, similar to the previous explanation, we have one common factor here or a common approach. Whatever you're going to work on, if you choose this topic, obviously one half of your effort is going to be on this word I've highlighted for you. Operational and financial performance of the organization. There is absolutely no doubt about it. And I want to, to contrast a slight difference here. When you say business performance, that is very, very different to operational performance. Uh, think about it like this. When you look at operational performance, you're basically looking at the nuts and bolts of the system, right? And without which, obviously, the machine won't run. So it's all about the levers and, and the joints and how the operational areas of that company, the functions of a particular scope that you choose, how do they perform? How are they working? Are they effective? Did your uh, innovation, whatever you've chosen here, has it greased the machine? Has it oiled the machine so that the machine operates smoother? Or that's why they say positive or negative. Or has it really, you know, taken added more friction to the machine where it's running uh, worse than how it was? And both things we see. So obviously i want to highlight remember whenever you choose this topic you will have to have an extremely thorough understanding and commit nearly 50 percent of your effort in establishing a clear understanding of the operational performance how is that company performing how is the company's operations performing in relation to whatever you've chosen and the financial performance of the company this is general this is holistic you will have to look at everything at the end you have to choose obviously when you write the report when you finalize your draft you can decide what should i be including but before that your work on the analysis and the evaluation to derive the impact of the innovation on the operational performance and the financial performance has to be thorough complete no negotiations there, my dear uh, brother, sister, mentee, uh, student. I have to tell you. Okay, let's come back to the key words. Now, analyze and evaluate the impact of an internal digital or technological innovation. An internal digital or technological innovation such as new business processes, new software or hardware, supplier customer processes. So it's quite simple when you think about it to understand. If you choose this topic, you're going to have to find a company. And in that company, you're going to have to ask them the question, what are the recent digital systems? digital innovations you have introduced by general right because actually what happened is this is a perfect time to choose this company and this is why we've seen an increase of the number of students who choose this topic is because a lot of companies over the pandemic era had to innovate they had to introduce a lot of new systems from even as basic things as conferencing video conferencing like using zoom etc has been a technological innovation that introduced remote working to the company and that can be used to the extent to which you can really prove the operational performance and financial performance impact. OK, 
okay so this is just a simple example to extremely complicated matters like introducing artificial intelligence introducing a bot system into you know your customer handling area uh, introducing uh, business process innovations you know working with outsource partners introducing uh, certain areas uh, you know process management things like that uh, if you choose uh, IT companies and, and tech outsourcing companies, you will find that there have been a lot of innovations that they've introduced. Some have worked, some have not. And that's the other thing. The second question you should ask is the impact overall, because at the outset itself, you want to get a general sentiment, a general understanding of whether the system uh, has the people you're speaking to, whoever to get this information, whether the system in their eyes, whether the system actually did support the business, did it help, did it improve or uh, did it make matters worse? Because you never know what you're going to find because you will have to talk to people who are using this system or who used it. And at that juncture, you're going to learn new things if you are really smart about your research effort and the way you hope to collect information. Now, at that point, you might have, you know, contrasting uh, findings, which is an important aspect of this, which is another reason why the examiner has highlighted the term positive or negative. Let me tell you one example that comes to my mind is change. Now, one of the most common things when you introduce digital innovations is that people have to change. They have to uh, improve their digital literacy. They might have to use software that they are not familiar with. They might have to change from you know software that they've been using for years. They might have to change from that to a new one, a new update. That might be a drastic change. Uh, like for example, I remember in the company I was working for, uh, Tableau, which is a very famous uh, digital uh, visualization tool, Moso was introduced. And not everyone took to it positively. It took the company almost two years to really convince and, and get people to really work at it. And there was a huge investment behind convincing people. So change is not very easy to come about. And that can be a negative factor, a negative impact of introducing a digital innovation. So really think whatever company you're choosing, it's better if they have introduced uh, this innovation within the last three years obviously uh, but what you can do is uh, rather than choosing an innovation that is very recent extremely recent like you know last quarter or something uh, it's better to go for a, a innovation that has had at least a couple of years to stem and to work in the system because only then you can get a contrasting view of before and after and that's important in this because you have to have a relative measure relative understanding of whether the system whether the innovation contributed or not and uh, this particular innovation let's look at a few examples here new business processes new software new hardware uh, new supplier customer processes you know uh, distribution management systems customer handling systems as i said bots and and you know uh, artificial intelligence, social media management systems, which now uh, there are many number of social media management systems which are quite centralized and automated. Uh, any particular business specific systems, communication systems, any kind of uh, technological innovation that has been introduced can be used. Now, obviously, uh, again, as far as this topic is concerned, you will have to find a company that is willing to share with you uh, their personal or their internal information meaning that this topic is a topic definitely that requires uh, your uh, requires a primary research effort so please keep that in mind and make sure as i mentioned for every primary research topic you get formal approval formal uh, acceptance from the senior managers or the directors or whoever you're talking to that they are willing to give that they will not redact their decision at a later point because i've known a couple of incidents where that happened uh, and also the anonymity uh, requirement to verify if it is required or not because you see uh, 
if I give you some context, most technological innovations that companies tend to introduce, these are innovations that they are hoping to uh, gain profit from. Okay. But my understanding is practically working at it at least until uh, after the project is, you know, after the innovation has taken a good strong foothold in the company. After that point, so let's say you introduce the system in 2022, it's going to take at least two to three years for the system to really, you know, just well spread within the company and for people to accept it and for them to get used to it. Now, this period, and you have it differs, but just generally exemplifying it would be, let's say, for three years. So then you're looking at a situation where 2025 now it has become the new normal. Right. And then like a good example is how long did it take for humans on Earth to get used to the pandemic to, for us to you know, really just normalize it as part of our life? It didn't happen overnight. It had to take a long time. So this is the same thing with this kind of change. Uh, at which point, right, this example, the three years are going to be very expensive. And a lot of expenses are going to be uh, unprecedented, things that you didn't expect. That's one. Unless, unless there's very, very crucial leadership capabilities within the company that are driving this change. Where I've seen situations where effective leaders have really convinced people that this is the best way to go and got the transformation done within a short span of time, like six months to a 12 months period. But these were situations with smaller teams. Um, large deployments can take longer, even if the leadership is quite effective. Now, after that point, after 2025, only then they're going to start recovering their investment. Okay. Now, the whole point of the system integration or the system introduction was to gain, as I said, profits to save money. That's why they innovate. That's why everybody innovates, right? Now, this whole thing, the, the way you look at it is going to have a, a general sensitivity around the project success because people would have you know, suggested the system whenever they wanted to call tenders. Obviously, you know, let's say, for example, you want to introduce an accounting package into the company. You have about 50 accounting packages in the world. So you, when you call a tender or when you really assess which options to take, you're going to like build an Excel sheet with all the, you know, pros and the cons and the subscription fee of the system and per user, etc. And then, you know, somebody is going to decide that, all right, so we're going to go with zero or we're going to go with, uh, you know, QuickBooks or whatever. Now, or somebody might say, no, 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 we're just going to use Excel as we were. Fine. That's also a smart decision. Now, the point is that there is going to be a stake on these people, on the people, on the decision makers, and it is going to affect their way of responding to any kind of scrutiny whenever someone is bringing a lens holding a lens to observe the performance of that decision they're going to get scared and the people who are actually using the system they are may they may be first users they may be trainers they may be introducers they may be beginners they are also going to have their own perception about working with this system some may be very comfortable some may be not so you have to understand this sentiment because it does have a sort of cultural impact. So uh, this is where you have to be smart in the collection of your information because for example, let's say the system has not reaped the financial benefits they expected, then the people who drove that decision are going to be very, very careful in and, and also very, very hesitant to give you the insider track, the insider information about the system because they are afraid that things that they don't want to come out could come out. So what does this mean? That you have to be smart, that you have to be gentle in your approach, that you have to be, you know, extra sensitive to this particular issue. Uh, and, and really, if you can, you know, especially in such a toxic and, and sort of, you know, dangerous, volatile instance volatile environment if you are able to convince them to give you the information and you you know you maintain a high level of professionalism and maintain even anonymity and you produce a good report i would definitely commend your effort my friend so keep that in mind this is very important 
as far as you choose this topic of course it's a primary research topic and uh, if you choose it uh, you are in for one hell of an interesting ride that i can tell you okay um that brings me to topic number three analyze and evaluate the impact on the financial performance of an organization of a recent change imposed by the regulatory environment okay so this is a, a much more straightforward and a easy to understand topic obviously as earlier the general impact analysis is on the financial performance so if you choose this topic there is absolutely no doubt that one half of your analysis effort is going to be on financial analysis you will have to do the most thorough financial because you don't have operational performance or business performance outlook in this topic which means that even that effort that you normally would have done if you had chosen a topic like that even that effort you're embedding in the financial performance effort meaning that your financial performance effort will have to be meticulous but there's a, a other side to it which we will look at this topic is about a change in regulation right regulation from your local accounting body or the international financial reporting standards whatever regulatory framework that the company from a uh, accounting perspective from a legal perspective some kind of regulation right from a competitive perspective from a you know mergers and acquisitions perspective some kind of exposure to their regulation if they are subject to a particular change it could be taxation how has that affected the company and most of these regulatory impacts does have not only a financial performance impact they do have social implications they do have economic uh, and other uh, non-financial implications performance implications reputational implications etc however this particular topic really focuses on that financial impact and therefore there is absolutely no doubt once again that you your financial analysis on this particular company performance will have to be extremely thorough and uh, the key terms here a recent change imposed by the regulatory environment and it could be legislation industry sector regulation taxation policy accounting standards and further we know that the change to be a recent is that it should have been introduced in the last three years so it can't be uh, longer than that older than that it has to have happened within the last three years uh, of of course you know in some cases uh, like let's say for example ifrss uh, for a publicly listed company you can choose to go the secondary research route because you know you have the notes you have the uh, financial statements if it's a listed company you have them with you from the annual reports and uh, you can look at the regulatory framework that they've used uh, before the change and after the change and that is important that is why they say at the end uh, your evaluation must consider the financial performance without the regulatory change and so without the regulatory change and the financial performance having applied the change to the same period so it's a before and after kind of situation right you compare the before you compare the after you evaluate how what were the impacts what were whether they were good whether they were bad uh, what has uh, what are the effects it caused within the company how did the uh, company's performance overall took to it whether the financial performance you know expresses a better uh, a way for the worse or a way for the better all of this you will have to look at so just uh, the the highlight would be the choice of the regulatory change that is where you have to be careful it has to be some kind of regulatory change where you have sufficient information where there's a, a high level of transparency and it will also require work that is not focused within the company because you see whenever they or whenever a uh, government or regulators introduce a regulatory change there are reasons as to why they're doing it it could be reasons like obsolescence it could be reasons like you know shifts in power shifts in governments shifts in you know who holds power and therefore they would make legislation 
uh, changes you see that uh, even you know modern times a lot of countries are amending their constitution itself the the primary document on which the land of the law is based on but you know they they do change it because uh, mostly people think that the constitutions that they have are insufficient you know so there is a, a, a secondary research aspect not related to the company a research aspect that is outside the scope of the company that is really in the realm of uh, the legislation or the regulatory change itself that is important you have to see why why what was before what did it do and why did they change it what is the new one how has it affected the overall environment the business environment the industry the macro micro all of that and really connect how that particular the story that you've understood about this particular regulatory change how has that played a role in our company in your company of choice what has it done has it made things better but worse from a more a higher focus a greater focus on the financial performance area and that's the understanding that you can have it's a very straightforward topic but uh, that requires a good amount of vigilance in the financial performance decision all right next we will be looking at topic number four and five okay now uh, four and five why together because you do see a sense of you know a, a kind of uh, heads and tails situation let me read them for you analyze and evaluate the business and financial performance of an organization which has performed exceptionally poorly over a three-year period with a critical analysis of the reasons for its difficulties so that is an organization which has performed exceptionally poorly over a three-year period with a critical analysis of the reasons for its difficulties and topic number five in contrast is analyze and evaluate the business and financial performance of an organization which has performed exceptionally well okay so let's highlight the common terms performed exceptionally poorly therefore in both the topics the common area becomes this and this all right so you have the first portion of the topic four and five being the same analyze and evaluate business performance financial performance of an organization which has performed that's where things stop being similar topic number four says exceptionally poorly over a three-year period with a critical analysis of the reasons for its difficulties right and topic number five says exceptionally well the complete opposite exceptionally well over a three-year period with a critical analysis of the reasons for its success okay so how do you really understand these two topics whatever you want to work with you have to understand that the company you choose has to have a legitimate argument a legitimate case that you can build in your report because if you look at the second the latter portion of the topic it says a critical analysis of the reasons for its difficulties or success difficulties or success but a critical analysis of reasons so you have to show the examiner the reasons and that is where the main focus is why that's the question they want to answer or they want you to answer why did they perform what is their rationale why did they perform well exceptionally well or why did they perform exceptionally poorly this is the most important aspect you have to understand and and why i'm highlighting it is because your effort it just cannot be because this is the topic these two are the topics 
since they've introduced it over the last couple of iterations period 43 and 44 actually the most the highest number of mentees who have come to me have been choosing either of these two so if the effort that you make in your research falls short then your argument that you build to prove the reasons because you're going to provide proof right the proof is the reason as to why they performed well or why they performed poorly so that proof if it's half baked if it's not strong enough if you don't have the why and the why and the why and the why that why this why that you you know you keep going layer by layer behind to really understand what the reason is what happened why did they perform well what went wrong what was unexpected what did they plan did it go right what were the market conditions that really caused this whatever what were the you know government changes you see the trump administration coming in uh, in the united states and that had a severe impact in most companies and uh, some of them really didn't expect a certain legislations, certain uh, regulatory changes, certain decisions that you know really caused the issue with reputation. You know the, for example, the China-U.S. Uh, relationship, which was you know quite stale at that point, which caused a, a number of changes. The reforms that he introduced uh, to the U.S. taxation policy, etc. So these have caused severe issues severe impacts as to you know the import export policy etc so you really have to if you choose a company you have to really number one establish an extremely thorough understanding of the business and financial performance common term whether it's exceptionally well exceptionally poor doesn't matter you have to develop that thorough understanding of the business and financial performance of the company and then that that process okay that process will give you an understanding of whether it is actually an exceptional performer or not and in that process will be a macro analysis because you cannot gauge you cannot determine exceptional performance the exceptional nature of their performance without looking at them in relation to others right like in your class if you have the the first you know the in in terms of performance if the first and the second if the gap between them is a mere average of you know like half a mark as opposed to another class where the first and the second has a gap of you know 20 points then you know who the exceptional performer is the if 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 both the seconds in these two classrooms have the same score and then the first in that particular classroom is just half a mark ahead of the second while the first in the other class is 20 points ahead then we know that the exceptional performer is not the first in this class but the first in that class so how can you do this how, how did you gauge the exceptional performance nature by looking at the two classes in relation that is the same thing you will have to do a benchmarking that is very very important my dear student my dear mentee remember that and do not limit yourself to one benchmark one comparator at your analysis stage there is no limit you have to establish as wide an industry and a macro perspective as possible if it takes 20 companies for you to look at at an outset at an overview level you have to do it so then you chose the company you established a thorough business and financial performance understanding by which you gain an understanding that if the performance if the business and the financial performance really reflects ex exceptional status whether it's uh, exceptional plus well or exceptional poor doesn't matter right you can go either way then if the company does very solidly very outwardly very easily express their exceptional performance case then thereafter you start building the rationale the logic the reasons as to why the exceptional performance why exceptionally well or why exceptionally poor why start asking that question and that is going to take at least a good minimum 50 percent of your research effort 
minimum 50 percent and and almost about 80 percent of your analysis effort as well excuse me only then you will be able to write your report at the standard Oxenbrook University expects you to do so please make sure that you don't you know negotiate with yourself in this effort let's continue reading it uh, the poor performance must not be entirely related to COVID-19 and must have become evident within the last three years. Your analysis may find that COVID-19 contributed to already poor performance and analysis that relies solely on the impact of COVID-19 will not have sufficient depth to secure a pass. Publicly available information must be used. You must. Okay, so uh, let's look at the first paragraph here. What are they saying? They're basically telling you that whatever this exceptional rationale you're building, it cannot be purely COVID. And this relates to actually uh, topic four, but you also see there are companies who have done exceptionally well because of COVID. Like e-commerce companies that were really, you know, not uptaking at all. Some of them thrived and boomed during the COVID-19 pandemic era, delivery companies that, you know, were nowhere in the map have come ahead, way ahead uh, because of the pandemic, right? So the pandemic cannot be the only or the major reason for whatever rationale you're building. It is, if it is so, then it is not the company that you should be going with. Whatever rationale you have to build, it has to have multiple reasons, multiple causes and not 20, but at least a minimum of three, four strong arguments with proof to build your case of exceptional performance. Further, you can definitely go the direction of uh, secondary research in this particular topic because, you know, especially with listed entities, you will find uh, plenty of information. But if you prefer, you can also choose an internal information or primary research company. Further, they go on to say, you must justify the choice of the organization, justify the choice of the organization, justify why you consider the performance exceptionally poor, and successful research reports will demonstrate a clear understanding of the industry sector and its competitive pressures, which is why I continually highlighted, you cannot limit yourself to one comparator. You cannot limit yourself to a, a narrow analysis. If it takes for you to look at the entire series of, you know, entire gamut of companies within that industry, you will have to do it. Uh, same reflection you have here, with topic five, successful research reports will demonstrate a clear understanding of the industry sector and its competitive pressures. You have to justify why you chose the company. You have to justify why you consider the performance exceptionally strong. There we go. Right. So that is a detailed look at the first five uh, topics that I really wanted to look at. I hope that this has been helpful, that it has, you know, given you the necessary ammunition uh, for you to really just uh, organize your thoughts in, in how, in what approach you're going to take uh, in deciding, you know, the way to move forward with this. Uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, students, mentees, I'm hoping to work with you at some point. I'm hoping to collaborate. I'm hoping that um, you will, uh, you know, associate the content, keep learning, keep improving. Uh, I know these are these challenging times, but don't falter. Uh, don't be negative. Uh, always remember the, the best thing is to always remember that whatever bad situation you think you're in, you always have someone worse, someone in an even worse situation. And when you look at that, the first thing is you should be grateful. And the second thing, you know that uh, you cannot uh, give up. You know that you have that it is a duty that you have because of the blessings you've got. It is a duty that you keep going on. So I wish you all the very best. I'll see you around uh, in the second or the third video of this series. But if you decide to go with topic one to five, one of them, uh, my best regards, my warm wishes, all the very best to you. Uh, you can work with me as your mentor. Uh, you can just have to, you know, use the link in the description to get the initial instructions email. All the very best, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck. Thank you. And I'll see you around.